So today we do have Billy Mays the third. Welcome, Billy. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here and being really awesome. Uh, haven't seen you since 3DL, and 3DL was just like, oh man, you you did such a good job, or everything you're doing, mouth council. Maybe. Man, I, I still feel the 3DL vibes, man. We've just been we've been carrying it carrying it on. Yeah, yeah for sure. So um, we'll get into that in, in a little bit and get into some of your projects. But the way I like to start off the podcast is by asking, uh, who are you, where do you come from, and what is your purpose here on Earth? Wow, okay. I'm Billy Mays III, um, or else to go by Infinite Third. And one of the things I do is kind of improvise music and just just accept it in the moment. And um, <clears throat> another thing I do is present things to the world. And um, my purpose here, I feel, is to um, is to connect with people and appreciate them for their unique gifts and and basically create with them, I feel, is, is my purpose, to create with people and to create with myself. Yeah. Is there another question? I forget what the other question was. I think there were three questions. Yeah, I think you answered all of them very officially <laughs> in my head. Um, so you have, let's see, Infinite Third. Uh, remember you are dreaming. Remember you are dreaming. All these beautiful projects, and it's hard to, to know where to start, but um, I did promote Remember Your Dreaming the most because I feel like that has, um, I don't know, it, just has, it seems like it ha has a lot going for it. Yeah, so. it really does. It's something that um, I've been, it's one of these ideas that just kind of, I gave a lot of space to, to just become what it had to be without trying to force it into being something, and... I would say it's been about a year and maybe a year and a half in between there since that like phrase kind of started being what it's called, whatever this thing is. And for a while, I was just kind of playing with it and making things based on it and talking about it. And now, in about the last two months or so, r right around the time of remember or of three DL. Um, it definitely, it definitely took on like a huge different kind of momentum um, where I have a team around it and a lot more responsibility with it, which is definitely giving it a lot of strength to grow quickly. So yeah, it's, um, it's a platform, it's a record label, it's a lot of things, but the, the, the thing I like to do is just not define it too much and just kind of let it keep being what it is. Yeah. And uh, do you also do, I, I saw you, I think, sorry, I'm just my... Sorry, guys. Um, we're, we're trying to get Shannon. So. <laughs> sorry, guys. Is that, where's Ashton? Ashton is... Manning the chat. Manning the chat room. Ah, oh, cool. Right. Yeah, he'll be back for the, excuse me, he'll be back for Space Weather, so... Cool. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, so, would you say... Well, before I forget, I wanted to ask you how you manage your time with uh, these different projects because I feel like sometimes I have a lot of projects that, to find the time to do all of them. Mm. I see, yeah. Um, the, the good thing about what I do is all the projects are kind of just one project because they're kind of like something that I give myself to. So when we talk about Mouth Council or Infinite Third or Remember Your Dreaming, they're all just different um, different focuses that I have as a person. Like, so I'm actually myself and all of it. Sometimes that one happens, sometimes that yeah. happens, but they're all just managing my time. I've always had kind of a, a freelance approach to everything, so the most important thing is having the time to to focus on what pulls me first. So it's like um, in the in that moment you, you try and feel what um, yeah. might 
bring the most yeah. joy or I definitely have like hierarchy about what gets my attention in it. But um man, you're you're like you're doing it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Sped up video. I see Dixon's you're violin right? back there. Dude, you got the Dixon's violin sticker. Shout out to Dixon. <laughs> awesome dude. Yep, we got it. <laughs> Shout out oh. to Dixon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's fun>. yeah. <laughs> he was also at 3D Island, just um, the plethora of amazing, creative, inspiring people there. It was absolutely yeah. incredible. Um, you did Mouth Council there. Do you want to talk a little bit about what Mouth Council is? Uh, Mouth Council is just the simplest idea ever. We have a, we just have a loop, a loop pedal, a five channel loop pedal, and I've just kind of a long time ago I started with a one channel loop pedal where we would just have a microphone and pass it around and build a beat, build build music on the spot. And up and until now it's really evolved into this into this kind of workshop kind of thing where it's just free form expression workshop and you know I, everyone kind of puts their flavor into it so it's never the same twice, you know, except maybe what I put into it is the same sometimes. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I was going to say that uh, at 3DL I got to experience Mouth Council and it was awesome. I actually tried to get one of the videos I took of you up before today, but uh, YouTube was disagreeing with me. But um, that being said, how many people do you think your largest Mouth Council was? Just like a guesstimate. Oh man. Um, yeah, whatever. I, I try to I try to keep it to like eight people at the most, but there have been times where I've tried to manage one with like. 15, 20 people, and it just it takes on a whole chaos that is kind of fun that you really just can't control. Yeah, the video I was editing, I think you had, I think you had about nine people. Ashton was right of me. On the porch. On the porch. Yeah, it was the porch video. Yeah, that, was, that, was one, that was one of my favorites for sure. Like, like they would come in. <laughs> we had some kind of daytime like energy where we had all just eaten, I think, and man. Video of it up. Did you did you see that one? Um, I'm not sure. What was it? I'm sorry. I think he cut out. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's cutting out a little bit, but we'll get through it. We're gonna pull through. <laughs> I, I didn't hear what you said, but I know it was on, the one on the porch was one of your favorites. You'd actually just work the kitchen. We have a picture of you working hard in the kitchen. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That was a nice photo. Yeah, good moment. That was that was awesome. What's that? You still offered to go and cook for other people after standing there, so good job. Yeah, got to be service, you know, be of service. <laughs> that was a, I feel like that was a very inspiring moment to me, too. And I was like, man, really amazing, amazing dude. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Really amazing, amazing. Come on now. <laughs> Can I put? I have this. I have this thing up here on the Google Hangout where I can put like a crown on me. Can I do that now? <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, save the mustache for later, though. The mustache. Right. For yeah. Mustache later. <laughs> we'll do it something later. Yes. Um. So you also did. Uh, you do Infinite Third. Uh, you play in the band for Infinite Third. Yeah. Um, Infinite Third is my. That's like, if I had a hierarchy of the projects, that's the closest and the most intimate one. That's. That's just my like another thing that over the years I I never tried to make into something specific. I just named it Infinite Third, and then knowing that that could be anything that happens, pretty much in this. You know, mainly it's guitar based and some beats and stuff. But um, I had no idea that it was going to become this like this ambient drone like like uh, improvisation kind of moment. On stage, and that's and that's that's what I love about it is that I couldn't have planned it that way, so I get to kind of just be surprised by it every time it happens anyway. So that's why I, I feel like that one has the most history in the momentum of all of them because it's just it's it's like this special expression to me. Yeah. Beautiful. And are there uh, other people who perform with you all the time as Infinite? Thing? No, um, every every once in a while I have a drummer or something come and come and jam with me at the end of a set or something like that. But I've I've kept it pretty much to where I can I can pull it off by myself, and I prefer that. 
you know, it's for traveling and for, for many reasons. But um, to, and to keep it that intimate experience where, you know, I can I can kind of change my mind as I'm going and sometimes I have a plan, sometimes I don't. But even if I have a plan, I can just change it in the middle of it. So, but it gives me freedom. You um you actually handed me a really cool uh, little USB drive at 3DL. Did you make all the samples and everything that's on that? Say that again. You handed me like a really cool little flash drive at 3DL. Mm -hmm. I have one right here, actually. I give you. Yeah. yeah. Before anybody says anything, I want to say if you you have a chance to win one of these flash drives, um, just send a, a email to the Facebook page of Project Bring Me Life, and whichever one we choose, uh, we'll, we'll. That's okay. good. Hey, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I just wanted to throw some shameless plug-ins real quick. <laughs> good job. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, yeah, that's a asking, yeah, that's my whole. That's like that's like five years of music, um, like the whole spectrum of the music I've made. Which I'd say a little bit over half of it is probably like it's like really abstract music that some of them are like twenty-five minute long, like ambient tracks. And um, but it's it's just things I've released over five years, and then things that I never released over five years, and. You know, it's all it's all organized in there and under albums, and a lot of it's just bonus content that was never never heard anyway. So I, that's kind of like that that kind of solidifies like the chapter up until now. And as we launch, remember your dreaming. Um, we're launching it with my new album, and that'll be kind of like the new the new era. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Yeah, when is your new album coming out, and what's the title of it? Um, the the title is Channels, and uh, it's it'll be out officially not until about April I think and but we're we're funding it in January with a crowdfund and stuff like that that's part of the whole launch of the thing I, I don't say too much about it yet because it's still kind of a behind the scenes thing but in a, in the the date I'm shooting for is February second we would we would start the, the funding campaign yeah. and we're gonna press it on vinyl and stuff so it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one you're making a vinyl yeah. That's pretty cool. There's I mean, I'm making one now for the uh, for the gently for my debut album. The five year anniversary is this uh, December, so I'm I'm pressing it to vinyl and a limited edition release to kind of commemorate it. So you've been doing music for five years, then? Officially, yeah, five years. I say I released my first serious thing five years ago, and by serious, I mean not that serious. Just <laughs> what I'm doing now, just five years earlier. <laughs> Was that within? Uh, was that as Infinite Third? It actually wasn't. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I, I think about a year later, I changed the name to Infinite Third. The original name, I'm not even gonna say here. It was just like, it was a. It was kind of like a whimsical name because I thought I was just gonna make this one kind of music. And like I said, um, I didn't want to be stuck to that one thing. So when I switched to Infinite Third, it was basically me giving it that space to be something really just strange and contradictory. Which infinite third, as a phrase, does that on its own? Who would you say your target audience really is? Then do you have one? I, you know, I, that's like one of those questions where like you have to define that, and then at the same time you don't. So I, I try, I try not to do that. I, I mean, there's obvious like influences and stuff where if you're into this band, you might be into my stuff, but. It's one of those things where I prefer people just find it without knowing that, and um, and I've noticed that so many different people from so many different backgrounds can connect with it, and um, that's the idea, right? You know, just to connect. So I definitely, I'm definitely surprised sometimes by the people who come up to me after a show, where maybe like in my judgment, I'm thinking like, oh, I don't know if they're gonna like this because it gets kind of extreme sometimes. It gets kind of intense and loud, like almost to the point of noise. But that's all part of like the painting of it, but um, you know I'll have I'll have older people who you just would never expect would come. They come up and they love the heavy part. Like that's what they call out about it is just that this thing was so weird that they couldn't even they never seen anything like it. And that's kind of that's what I realized a while ago is that I don't want to like I don't want to target like males twenty five to thirty four, you know, <laughs> or something. That's a weird target. <laughs> <laughs> no money. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> cool. I, I wanted to remark on um, 
Please remember. Uh, remember you are dreaming. I, I want to get into the title a little bit, but it's funny because at 3DL we put our cards down um, in front of the lunch line and we looked at it and said, remember you are dreaming, and then wake up for the project <laughs> bring your life card. Yeah, I know, I know. That was that was amazing. I think I have a picture of that on my camera, actually. Oh, man. <laughs> Um, I don't know. That's uh, so I, I'm I'm trying to get uh, you to talk about the inspiration or just the the name. Remember, you're dreaming. Like what? Yeah. Does that really, what is that saying? Man, it's such a it's such an awesome question to answer because it's. I could play with it every time because the whole kind of the whole point of it for me on a personal level was um, that it can have so many different meanings. It's such a simple phrase, but you could take it so many different ways. Um, that goes for anything really. But um, I've just I don't even know how the phrase came about to be honest. I think it was just maybe different influences throughout my life and different re things I've read and all that. But um, something about the symmetry of the phrase is like how it chose itself and. Definitely too far into like defining it as like you know um, life is just a dream or it's an illusion or anything like that. But you know all those things are welcome in it and part of it. So I hope I hope that's like not too vague of an answer that you're uh, looking. For. Pretty vague. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I'm trying to get that as kind of like a a, a leeway into. Um, Something that you may call spirituality or alignment or anything like that. Um, I just I wanted to to get your your story of a week. Yeah. Um, you know, I I like the word dreaming because a lot of people take it as like the the sleeping dreams and and that and I think um, the word dreaming itself can kind of just be images in front of you appearing spontaneously is like the definition of dreaming, one of the definitions. So I think I think one kind of spiritual um, teaching that I really took in along the way was like the Toltec wisdom, um, which is like the four agreements and stuff like that. The four agreements, the master of love, the voice of knowledge, like Dr. Bill Ruiz. And, um, it's just kind of like it's about our own private like experience that we have and how it's a creative experience and we just kind of interact with it and and I don't know it kind of took me to other places and I guess dreaming for me is like the spontaneity of it and the fact that we're all dreaming separate dreams but we're sharing the dream too it can be. ultimately though it's about for me like playing with language because we're just we're always just like shuffling words and kind of kind of like defining our experience all the time and I've come to find that like the words are actually like they're a layer in it there's like feelings and there's images going on within us and then there's the actual images outside but I've just always felt that words language is something to play with because when you can play with it you can kind of mold it and make an art out of it you know so remember your dreaming for me personally is is about playing with words and knowing how powerful that is. I went a lot of ways, but yeah, that was a that's where it goes for me. And then the best the best part about it is that everyone has everyone seems to have a different take on it, and they and they give me their take, and I and I love hearing it because it's a creative process that they're having with it, and they're creating words to describe what they think about it, and, and it's kind of this ongoing, ongoing defining of something that can't be defined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do have people in the chat room, and perhaps later we can get some of them on to ask their question uh, on cam. Yeah. And then, um, Where's the chat room? Let me get in there. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm the, uh, the chat room is all you have to do is go to projectgreenlife.com, and uh, you can't miss it right in front of you. It'll say join the chat room. Right on. Um, that? That. And your face is really pretty on our front page, so you can, you'll go there and click above your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, we are doing the the giveaway and billy was kind enough to sorry about that. I'm back i'm back sorry about that yeah, billy fell out for a little bit, but he's back. i was just uh, talking about the the fact that you're kind enough to give away one of your flash drives to somebody. So, thank you for that <laughs> and <laughs> we're going to get to that um, after space weather which is coming up in about five minutes. Um, All right, I, I was I was I was miles away. My sound went off. I got out of the thing, but I'm back. <laughs> recap me on what just happened. I saw you talking really fast, and I couldn't hear you. You time traveled. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Say that again. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yep. Time um, traveling. Back. I'm back. We have about a, a <laughs> five more minutes until we're going to go to the space weather. Uh, so if you have time for a few more questions, then. Did anybody in the chat room say anything yet? No? They're interested in Toltec and things like that. They like the, the four oh. agreements that he mentioned. You guys never read that? Have you guys read that? I read the four no. agreements. I actually really love that book. I don't think I have. The Master of Love, um, The Voice of Knowledge, very good books by Don Miguel Ruiz. And, the, and what's awesome about it is his son is actually... Of, of the age now where he's writing his own interpretations of the Toltec teaching that he learned from his father. So he's he's kind of using his own words, which is how they kind of, that's all they really talk about is like, you know, using your words and being being impeccable with your word. Be impeccable with your word is um, like the third agreement or something. So it's, it's really interesting to watch like literally a family passing down knowledge over the ages and it's it's really solid, not absolute, like very, very flowing and spacious teaching that, you know, it's not like the Bible where there's like definite, definite things that people try to use. It's it's almost built um, sparse enough that you can play with it. You can, you can kind of, they kind of trust you to create with it. It's pretty beautiful. Yeah, what resonated with me a lot was being impeccable with the word, I feel... Um, that, that was pretty, pretty heavy one. It is, I think, the third one. And it's, I think it's also the longest chapter in the book. I mean, one of the most important. It's about, you know, being impeccable with your inner word, like the word against yourself, and never use the word against yourself or against another, you know. Yeah. Or to, you know, kind of just like know when to speak and know when not to speak. I like that a lot. No when to speak and no when not to speak. I'm just not going to speak. No. <laughs> Good. No. Uh, man. Uh, so we talked about uh, mouth count, so we talked about infinite third, we talked about the number you're dreaming. Were there any other projects uh, or anything else that uh, you wanted to know? Well, Probably the most efficient thing I have in my life is the fact that those three things are fractal within of projects and of, of collaborations and stuff. So it's, it's really simplified everything to where I, can, I know which, which direction I'm focusing in. And, but the beautiful part is they're infinitely deep to where there's never a shortage of projects within Remember Your Dreaming videos, um, albums that we're working on for next year. I have a lot of I have a lot of awesome artists that we're working with, and pretty much every day I'm just kind of driving forward what I can, you know. And just so it's a, just how I have to work. I can't really put too much of a of a parameter on it, but I have to have like a healthy a healthy boundary around it, you know, if that makes sense. And I can kind of play freely within that healthy boundary. Hmm. So, yeah, so, like, really, that, that's my life, <laughs> is Mouth Council, Infinite Third, and Remember Your Dreaming, and uh, the infinite things that that those all entail. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a website for Mouth Council that people can play? Mouthcouncil.com, just kind of simple website with some recordings, and a couple from 3DL, actually, um, that was recorded by Paul from Shift. You, you meet Paul at 3DL? Shift.is. Not Paul Kellogg, is it? No, Paul Luminari. He uh, 
He might be watching right now. Who knows? Um, yeah, he kind of um, he recorded a bunch of them. We got some some great recordings. Um, but yeah, there's a SoundCloud for Mouth Council that I just try to any ones that I happen to capture, I try to cut them up into like songs and post up there. So that's ongoing. I'm always doing that, and I'm always bringing Mouth Council to wherever. You saw how it was. It's very loose. Um, in the beginning, I tried to make it a little bit formal and host it as a workshop, which I still do. But some some situations, like most of 3DL, was just like, where are we going to go? Where are we going to do it? And then we did it. And, and somebody always wanted to do it and be a part of it, too. Yeah. You had a couple of followers that were all about it. You know, and that's what's powerful about Mouth Council is it's all of us. You know, it's not it's not just me. Oh, that was the U.S. <laughs> Fell off. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, just do it. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever oh, use yeah. your samples from uh, Mouth Council and your other music? No, but the fun thing is, um, currently, um, we are planning a big Mouth Council mixtape that I want you guys to be a part of. It's we're we're really just over the next six or seven months collecting mouth samples where, you know, you know me and a few of my friends beatbox and stuff, so we, we're going to be starting with that a lot, but basically I'm making produced beats, but it's only going to be mouth sounds, and my word is to do like a sort of hip-hop mixtape to where we just make a, a bunch of beats and then have rappers rap on it. And release it as this big mouth council mixtape in the summer of 2015. Oh man, I'm gonna say recording samples every day. Yeah. Yeah. I do, I, I do. Yeah. I'll have you guys be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be so cool. Um, I wanted to ask you about Full Sail University. Is that where you graduated? From? Yes, it was. I uh, I went straight out of high school to there, and I had my bachelor's degree by the time I was 20. And I don't recommend that. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I recommend the school. It's, it, it was awesome when I was there. But um, I was way too, like, not ready for such an intense, quick experience. I did I did great and uh, got good grades, and I graduated on time and everything. And, but the, looking back, I realized how I almost, like, wasn't mature enough to handle that situation being so amazing. Yeah. So that's just my own personal experience. But... Yeah, that was a that was an awesome place. And you're you're, uh, you're in Florida again, right? I am in Florida. I'm in Lando Lakes, Florida, which is where they make that butter, Lando Lakes butter. Nice. Yeah. Out of butter. What's that? The lake is made out of butter. No, Lando Lakes. There's a butter company. Oh. Lando Lakes. It's like this famous thing. Every time I say it, there people are like, "Oh, like the butter," and I'm like, "Yeah, I guess," and I think it is. So. <laughs> I didn't do so do you uh, do you still talk to anybody that you graduated with or were in? I have, some, I have some friends that I graduated with, and uh, I mean that was that was uh, 2006. I graduated, so makes me feel old. But yeah, I mean I, I keep in touch with a good amount of people that I went to school with. It was a really tight group. <laughs> I graduated high school in '07. Oh man. <laughs> oh, man. I guess technically we're the same generation still, but I don't know. The chat room asked what your actual major was. I might have missed that because I was in the chat room. But did you have an actual major, or did you change majors? Asking you. You're asking me. Okay. No, I went. I got an associate's degree in recording arts, and then I got a bachelor's degree in entertainment business. Uh. Should ask uh, Brett. Ask Brett if he wants to to come and ask a question on the cam, on the cam. I saw a question though before. Um, I saw one question in that long feed of the of the um, chat room that just goes really fast. It does. Go for it. Someone asked what my biggest ins who my biggest inspiration was I in life. I saw that, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> it's a good question. Um, but and I thought about it while while all the craziness is going on technically and um, it's an obvious answer because it's my dad um, but it was nice because I got to kind of think about you know how it's like someone so close to me and someone who's passed away but um, yeah it's my dad he, um, he I feel like a lot of 
the human character that like you get to kind of make for yourself a lot of the things I learned came from his character and um, just you know just about appreciating people and, and generosity and stuff and of course um, just following your following your path and being successful at it is another thing that's inspired me about my dad but yeah my dad is the answer <laughs> Can we clear this up for a little bit and let the audience know that your dad is Billy Mays? Yeah, let's clear it up. Yeah. So he was, awesome. uh, he was the guy. Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know what to say to that, but I can say that like, I understand personally because I lost my dad too. And to be able to look up to somebody like that is very important. Yeah. Um, I am we, able to come live and say that, so thank you. Did you lose your dad? Um, I lost my dad actually when I was nine. Mm. That seems pretty early. Yeah, there's quite some story behind it too, but just being able to know that you are able to still find inspiration in that rather than sadness. That's. Yeah. that's I mean, it's been five years, five and a half years, and um, it's, it's just, I, I was lucky because I actually didn't even grow up with my dad. Um, he, he and my mom got divorced when I was like, three and he went off to kind of like pursue his pitch man dream you know so like very similar to my life he had this thing that he did and he traveled and did it and hoped to connect with people and and he ended up you know being like the pitch man you know so the, the good the good thing is that after college after full sale I got to move in with him for about three years and then I had another year or so where we were we were living in the same city you know like seeing each other regularly and I really got to build a, a real relationship with him before he died where at the time you don't know how precious it is but looking back it's like man if, if he would have just passed away before I got to reconnect with him who knows how I'd feel but I got to have that time with him to uh, learn from him and that way learn from him up close you know? and he really just took care of me in so many ways he's very divinely um place that you got to have that time with him. I'm yeah. glad that you got so the timing of, of my dad's death is something that I still just like my mind's kind of blown about um, in many ways and that included and you know he, he died within five days of Michael Jackson. Really? Yeah so I remember Michael Jackson died and my dad was like commenting on it and you know and then I just felt like I became part of like a media thing even though I was just like the side character of it. It's like I kind of, the, the the nation was grieving, you know, the world was grieving for Michael and for other celebrities that had died at that time, which was like kind of a very potent time for that. And um, the, my dad had just taken me to um, L.A. The last time I saw my dad was, he was on the Conan O'Brien show. When Conan O'Brien was on the Tonight Show, he was, he was on that. And I told him if he ever was on that, that he'd have to take me, and he took me. And that was the last night I was with him when we were at the show backstage. So it was like this this epic moment. That seems like such that, a fun experience. Yeah, no, it was amazing. And then you know you don't even think that that's gonna be the last time, but you know what, what better time could it be? We were just having like he was on top of his game, and we were just like kind of just living living like this this crazy dream of just like that whatever that is. I don't even know that what celebrity is and stuff, but it was it was definitely interesting. <laughs> Did you meet Conan O'Brien? Yeah, yeah, I have a picture with him, and uh, there, there's a picture floating around of me and my dad and Conan, and Conan's like a foot taller than me at least, or a foot and a half taller than me. <laughs> and they were awesome, and we also met uh, Lisa Kudrow from Friends. Yeah. Friends, and uh, yeah, it was just one of those times, and my dad was like, it's it's kind of unfortunate the way his his life ended because he was pretty much at the top. He was like he was definitely like about to hit a new plateau of what he was doing to where it kind of got into like pop culture over just being a pitch man on TV infomercials. He had become like a meme and he was in on the joke. He would kind of like do skits with with places and you know he would he was he would kind of make fun of himself cuz he understood that it was just like a character, you know. But um, he a lot of people don't know this, but he was he had just signed a contract to be the spokesperson for Taco Bell. <laughs> You know, and I'm I'm not like a Taco Bell supporter by any means, but you just kind of 
know something bigger is even coming still, you know, with his career. And unfortunately, it, it didn't. He was the backstory behind my dad's death that a lot of people don't know is that he had a he had a bad hip. He had two hip replacements that um, didn't take. So he he was doing all this traveling and work for the past like two or three years of his life with a horrible hip. He had he had to limp everywhere and have a cane. And like nobody knew this, but um, the timing of it is I, I say that because the timing is important to understand that the day after he died was his third hip replacement scheduled. And he was scared, nervous, and they told him if this one doesn't work, like you may never walk again. And he did he never got to the surgery. He died right before it. And in some ways I wonder if that was just like an easier, like that was the least resistance way because maybe he had a hard life ahead of him, you know, who knows? Like a like a much harder path ahead of him. So I, I sit and I sit and reflect on the timing a lot, often, you know, and, and it's it's just one of those like I look at who I am today and I think of all the timing that's played out and a lot of it's been uncomfortable and a lot of it's been, you know, I've kind of suffered through it, but it's, it's built me into something that I'm ready to be now. I feel like at the same time, you know, my, so I, I really couldn't imagine any other way is what I'm trying to say is that I'd like to say that I wish I had my dad around and stuff, but there's just something where it's like, that was just the, it was just perfect and how it unfolded. And I, and it, it even surprises me to hear, to say that, to hear myself say that because of how much grief there was and how much suffering, but it's it's really it really helps you see the piece in it whenever you you can look at it and say, wow, like that's just that's just how it had to unfold. Hmm. Well my heart just really goes out to you and I I just want to say that your dad this might sound a little weird, but your dad was kind of an inspiration to even my household. My grandma bought like oxycleated stuff and she actually like watched the commercials and the commercials and like uh. And it's like hearing stuff too. I thought that was cool. And when I got to meet you at 3D, I was like, dude. I even questioned it for a while. I think I asked somebody. I was like, is that really sad? That's freaking awesome. <laughs> like, that was cool. Yeah. And I'm I understand. so happy. You're thank you, thank you. Um, it's funny how he connected with people, and you know, I I don't know why. I can't really explain it. I don't know. I but he. I think what I, I mean. I have my little theories, but. You know, he did more than just yell and bark at people. He was kind of vulnerable about it, and, like, he knew it took a lot of trust to do that and to put yourself out there and to, um, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but he was he was finding inventors and helping inventors get their product to the market, and then he would represent them and give it this big boost. And that was, that was his dream was to, like... He loved it. Uh, have a platform for people. What did you say? You kind of like it did the it did the glitch noise. I couldn't hear what you said. I loved it. I feel like that's him trying to join in. Like you could feel that he loved what he did and he wanted to reach out to people. Yeah, yeah. He didn't necessarily maybe have the awakening movement we have now, but you could tell that he wanted people to wake up, even if it was just to buy what he was trying to promote. He wanted people to help people. Well, he had a very warm energy and. Um, Anyone who met him, he he really was able to kind of just drop in with them and see them. You know, I, I I went through many airports with him and flew many planes in the height of his fame, to where it was. I got to the point where I knew exactly, like you can kind of just spot it from a, a long way away. Like, oh, these people are about to come up and like ask for pictures and autographs and stuff. And it, and it happened all the time. Like he's he's totally recognizable. You know, he's he has the beard and he's kind of. He's kind of dressed and like, oh, you know that's the guy. Like, you, you have no doubt that that's the guy from TV. So people would come up to him. But what I always noticed was he'd be in hip pain. He'd be just, like, tired from traveling all the time. But he would sit with these people and just, like, talk to them. Like, he, he didn't want it to be this, like, yeah, you know, here's your autograph. Now go. And, like, he would just kind of, like, he would look at it as, like, oh, this person respects what I do. And, you know, and he would... And I don't know what it was about him, but he, he had like a, a genuine spirit to where he, he didn't let it get to his head like that, you know. He shined and he shined bright. Maybe he's the reason we're having so many uh, technical difficulties tonight. He wants to... Right, right. <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it like that. And uh, I feel like yeah, you should just know that you're like, you emit that same energy to you. Like when you walked around 3DL, and I, I keep talking about 3DL because that's the only chance I've had to meet you. Like when you walked around, you have that same energy about you. And you just talk to people like they're your best friend. And, yeah, I mean, I really, I mean, 3DL is an easy place to feel that. 
<laughs> True. But, um, you know, at my best, or at any, any of us at our best, I feel like we're looking at everyone, like, because we know that it's empathy, I guess. You know, you know that everyone's kind of going through shit, and you know that everyone's kind of passionate about something, and we're all kind of just having completely different experiences, but you've got to think that most of it overlaps. Like, oh, we're all, we are, we're all afraid of, like, a lot of things, and it's this primal fear that we all have, and that that comes up even in, like, um, social situations. So, like, the, the best case is we can all get together and just, like, understand that about each other and just, like, kind of feel safe to to be ourselves. So 3DL and, you know, any anywhere you can bring that energy is, is a place where people thrive, you know? And that's that's kind of, like, you know, it's not always easy to do it out in the world, but... There are times where you can just kind of you can just kind of bust it out and just make a new friend like that and just just be jamming with them like five minutes later, beatbox and mouth council, you know. So, yeah, I, I I appreciate what you're saying and I I feel that you guys bring that too and it's it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I did I did want to do the giveaway, and I saw. Brett was asking a few questions, and he's semi new to the podcast. I think he was on last week, but um, is, is Brett still there? Yeah, he is. So, for a chance to win the flash drive, I was going to ask Brett if you could give us uh, the college that Billy Mays went to. If you could tell us that answer. Do you trivia? Yep. That's fine. Can I ask just Brett, or can I ask whoever? Well, I just, I, because I know a few people in there have already won, and I just want somebody who hasn't won yet to win. But I guess maybe the first person to answer who hasn't won yet. Okay, I'll do that, because we do have a couple new people. Okay. Anyway, Why? you can keep talking while I okay. do this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Just anything? I don't know what she's saying. But after we do this giveaway, we're going to do the mustachio question, or, yeah, mustachio question segment. Have you, um, do you know anything about that? No, I don't. Tell me about it. Okay. So every podcast at the very end, excuse me, we do the uh, mustachio question. Oh, Brett said full sale. You got it out before I could even. Okay. So Brett said full sale university. Congratulations, Brett. That is, is that correct, Billy? Yes, that's correct. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, Billy, what was his name? Kane? Billy Kane. No, Brett, Brett Kane. Kane. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Talking to Billy. <laughs> Sweet. So, Brett Kane, um, congratulations. Thank you for watching the podcast, man. We appreciate that so much. Thanks, Brett. 